Hello and welcome to the command phase. My name is Mark and thank you so much for joining me. Unless you've been living under a rock, we know that the new 4th edition of Age of Sigmar will be coming out in the summer, with a spectacular trailer showing off the new edition, plus a huge number of rules changes teased at Adepticon and on the Warhammer community website to dive into. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. In a brief lore recap, we see a Skaven Blight City bursting from the earth in Ashki in this rataclysmic event, pouring forth immeasurable numbers to attack the realm. No longer are we in the Era of the Beast, but now into the Hour of Ruin. Behind the scenes, the Great Horned Rat had struck a deal with Archaon himself to be ascended as the fifth Chaos God, which may not have gone down too well with the other four. More to see from that later on in the edition, I'm sure. The Stormcast Eternals of the Hallowed Knights Chamber stand against the ever-growing tide of rodents, but against the overwhelming odds, the Ruination Chamber has been unlocked and the veteran Stormcast Eternals have come forth to fight. As we see from the main protagonist in the trailer, fighting the different armies from each edition, which was a nice touch, but also showing that they are the strongest and hardest fighters. While their immortality is a blessing in some ways, it's also a curse, losing a piece of their humanity each time they die and are reforged. These warriors are the only forces hardy enough to enter a war zone corrupted by the Warpstone. For these, it could be the final time they step into battle, at least as themselves. This will be a ground-up rewrite of Age of Sigmar of not only the core rules, but with each faction as well, with the aim to make the game slicker, easier for a newer player to pick up while retaining its depth, which certainly sounds great on paper. The team talked about building on 3rd edition with more interaction with commands and counterplay in your opponent's turn, casting spells or even charging in their turn as well, which could open up some very interesting plays to save your command points for. More universal special rules are being introduced, allowing those to sit inside the main core rulebook, freeing up space on the war scrolls. In the interview they mentioned champions, standard bearers and musicians as three examples of this, plus weapon abilities. For me, this was a great change to 40k so that you wouldn't need to remember the different named rules for say Deep Strike for each army, which essentially did the same thing. Plus the weapon abilities in 10th edition 40k having one set of rules that everything works from rather than army specific, while it feels a little less fluffy, makes the game a lot more accessible. Individual units melee ranges have been removed from the game and replaced with everyone having the same 3 inch range. This is a change that will make it easier for newer players getting into the game for sure, but I can see the nuance of making sure your, your charges allow for the minimum amount of crackback due to weapon ranges being a disappointing change for some. This range is also applied for objective markers as well, so down to 3 inches from the marker rather than 6. This may well allow for more objectives to be on the battlefield at once or potential changes to terrain layout. Speaking of which, they talked about making the terrain a little more impactful. This could be the simply the addition of more onto the table, certain terrain characteristics or more rules on how they interact with the models. Hopefully this won't end up adding more complexity to the game than needed. There will also be an underdog mechanic being introduced to make games more competitive right until the end, which in concept sounds great. This could be similar to the Gambit system in Warhammer 40k which hasn't really been utilised all that much, although that's mainly down to them being a little lacklustre, and a lot of the new victory conditions you need to achieve require more units than you probably have got on turn 3 if you are behind. Hopefully this will have been taken into account when designing this mechanic for Age of Sigmar. Double turns will now come with a larger cost with the changes to priority in the game, which sounds like a nice risk versus reward system in place here to make your decision making even more important than it was before. Last of all, Battleshock has been removed from the game. While we have no more details as to whether Bravery is still in the game, it'll be interesting to see how this is implemented. Potentially something that triggers in the hero phase, similar to 40k with debuffs if failed, with the auto-pass stratagem also going to once per game. 
pure speculation here, so do take that with a pinch of salt. Onto the army rules now, and the first thing to talk about is the army list building is being streamlined, which could mean a whole manner of things here. Although if 40k is anything to go by, it could become a whole lot easier to build the army you'd like to with very little restrictions. I do think a nice mix of that and what is currently in place for Age of Sigmar could go down well. With the introduction of universal special rules and weapon abilities, it has allowed the rules team to streamline down the war scrolls to be able to fit everything on one side even for the larger, more powerful characters, making it easier to read and faster to navigate the item that you're looking for, which sounds very positive to me from a newer player looking to jump in with this edition. Everything you do in the game is now an ability, from moving, shooting, fighting, casting spells alongside unique actions found on your war scrolls, with a clear declare and effect step making it very easy to understand how everything works. There will also be colour coding on these war scrolls to show which abilities work in which phase alongside symbols, which for a newer player learning the game, it sounds like it'd be more accessible and help to speed up the game. The unit stats have been reworked completely. Games Workshop went through all of the units to make sure the stats match up to what they should look like visually on the tabletop. This would make some of the units have more or less health, which has been renamed from Wounds for Clarity, or potentially different armor saves. Again, it sounds like a really positive change and a way of helping a newer player understand each unit's style and speed up decision making. At the start of 4th edition, all of the current battle tomes will be invalidated, just like 9th edition 40k. So for those who haven't had your battle tome long, it's a little disheartening. But at least with the wide range of changes to the game, having access to all of these indexes for free on launch day is at least a good thing. That is until your battle tome is released at any point in the three year cycle. If you're one of the later armies to get your full battle tome, it could get a little stale. At release, every army will get a free downloadable faction pack with all of the rules including battle traits, battle formations, heroic traits, artifacts of power, prayers and spells, plus all of the war scrolls for your army. The points will be separate to this faction pack on the Warhammer community website at launch, similar to that of the Munitorium Field Manual for Warhammer 40k, which gets updated with each balanced data slate and codex release. There will also be a release of physical war scroll cards should you wish to purchase those, but once they are released I'll make a video on how to make your own if you wanted a cheaper alternative. Something that could well happen that did for Warhammer 40k in this indexing process were older fine cast models being removed from the game and into legends for narrative play. Just something to keep in mind if you're planning on adding some units to your force for the new edition. They also mentioned that the Armies of Renown, Regiments of Renown and content from the Dawnbringer series is being updated for the new edition, which certainly sounds promising for all of those armies involved, although it could well make for a less level playing field compared to the other index armies. Certainly something to keep an eye on when the edition releases. The new General's Handbook will be included in the launch box containing all of the match play battle plans and tactics for those interested in that. And last of all, Path to Glory has been revamped and now focuses on heroes and units progression, which feels a lot like the Crusade rules for 40k, which are in a pretty nice place. The last major talking point is the new game mode being introduced with 4th edition with Spearhead, which sounds very similar to that of Combat Patrol for Warhammer 40k. Here you can pick up a force in a box and have a good jumping in point for an army, but also a quick game format to play against one another, often cited in the preview video as under an hour, which certainly sounds great. The current Vanguard boxes will be getting replaced with Spearhead boxes for this game type in the edition, where we currently have the Cities of Sigmar, Flesh Eater Courts and Stormcast Eternals available to purchase. They also talked about this game being very well balanced against each of the boxes, probably with rules amendments in the box like Combat Patrol has to make this the case, which won't end up being used outside of this format. Hopefully they will have learned from Combat Patrol in these regards to balancing to make the boxes a lot more competitive against one another. There will also be choices in the army construction inside the box like command traits and artifacts and giving your force different ways to fight which really does help keep the format fresh. 
You'll have cards to pick up each turn which dictate what you're trying to do, which sounds very similar to the current Leviathan mission cards in Warhammer 40k. Although these will probably be very much slimmed down versions, so it would be interesting to see how these end up playing out. The other positive with the faster gameplay, it sounds like this would be a perfect game to play in an evening to fit around busy schedules, or to be able to play multiple games in a day with your friends. Plus, if this game mode ends up being a success, which I certainly hope it does, it could well be a great way for tournament players to complete more games in a day and potentially have one day events rather than multiple, which makes it more accessible as well. All in all, this sounds like a really positive game type being introduced, and if it turns out to be everything that was described and actually balanced, I can see this being a great way to jump into the game. Especially as smaller points games, at least from my experience in Warhammer 40k, don't tend to translate well with the main rules. So there we have all of the information so far on the changes to Age of Sigmar for 4th edition. While not a whole lot of detail, it's definitely something to get your teeth stuck into as we wait more details on the rules and models being shown off. Personally, I'm super excited to jump into the game and frantically building a Cities of Sigmar army as we speak, ready for launch. Let me know in the comment section below what you make of these changes and if you're excited for the new edition, I'd love to know. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more Age of Sigmar content, please hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps the channel to grow. I'd love to know if this is something you'd like to see more of on the channel going forward. Thank you all so much for watching the command phase and I'll see you in the next video.